Welcome to the My Village Well podcast. We are so thrilled you're here. My name is Michelle Francois Walsh, and I am super excited to introduce our guest today. She is an author of three books. She is this community builder and holds space for women to really sort of step into who they are. And she's this like creative powerhouse. I've really never met anyone like you, Whitney. We had one phone conversation. You left my head spinning with so many ideas. And so thank you for saying yes to be here today. Absolutely, Michelle. I love it. I'm excited for our conversation because um, all the interactions we've had already have been very inspired and sparkly and um, and real, practical. Like, yeah, this shit has got to be practical. Sorry, can we say that? On we can so podcast? say all the words, all, any of the words and all the words. We believe in that here. Fabulous. Because if we're stepping into our own th- authenticity, it's like, you know, yeah. I remember Brene Brown saying like um, when she first got started, because, you know, she she loves Jesus, but she likes to drop the F-bomb. And she's like, she was worried about the Jesus people. She dropped the F-bomb. Then she was worried about the other people because could she talk about Jesus? And she's like, I am just going to show up exactly as I am. And I'm all boom, heard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. That, that's, that's what we that's promote the call. here. Yeah. So yes. I was introduced to you through Karen Adamski and um, I was amazed and not amazed. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a big surprise to me, but it kind of was that you are this creative powerhouse, but also that you opened your first art studio with never even having taken a paintbrush to the canvas. And so can you yeah. explain yourself, Whitney Freya? <laughs> <laughs> right? I know. I'm so grateful for that part of my story because like it was hysterical. Seriously, if you had been at my 20th high school reunion, which was a hot minute ago, um, and I hadn't really seen a lot of friends since high school because I was you know, out of there. And they're like, you do what? Because... I was such a vocal wannabe artist, like constantly leaning over the shoulders of anyone who could paint or draw and being like, oh, I wish I could do that, but I can't. I didn't inherit that DNA. Like that's, you know, that old paradigm story around creativity is only some people are born with that creative, you know, inclination. And even then, you know, you probably shouldn't like devote your life to it or anything. Um, Mm -hmm. So So I had been selling books door to door for four summers after graduating from the University of Michigan, which is important because nothing is this scary. I mean, if I hadn't done that, I don't think I would have opened an art center with no art background. Uh I'm just guessing. Right. Yeah. Um, And it was but it worked out so beautifully. Um, I got inspired by a book I was reading called Zen and the Art of Making a Living. Mm. And in it, Lawrence Bolt, the author, quoted Nietzsche as saying art is the proper task of life. Mm. And then the author was like, a lot of you will think this has nothing to do with you, but this book will insist throughout that unless you adopt an artist mentality, you're not going to be able to create the life of your dreams. Mm. So I was a general studies major in college and then had been selling books door to door and was way aware that the real world was more like a blank canvas than a multiple choice test, right? And I had had such a hard time getting into an art class because I, I carried the wannabe-ness, like it was a consistent part of me, yeah. which I coach people like, what are you a wannabe? Because I think you're meant to be it at some point. <laughs> and, um, and to take the classes that I thought I could probably handle in college, which was like, um, you know, mixed media collage. Yeah. You had to take drawing 101, 102, painting 101, 102. And I was like, well, I can't do that. I mean, I literally was just like, I can't, you know, I'd fail or something. So, um, and then at one point I was living in Charleston, South Carolina, in between recruiting people to sell books and selling books. And (laughs) I got the courage up to call the art center. So this is when you used to have to call. There were no websites. And I asked this nice old lady. Or I just told her, I'm, I, you know, I want to register for an art class. And she's like, oh, oh well, the next registration's in 13 weeks. And I was like, <gasps> 13 weeks? Like, I'm not even going to be living in this state in 13 weeks. So, yeah. so when he said, unless you adopt an artist mentality, you will not be able to create the life of your dreams. The only thing I knew for sure 
was that I wanted a life of my dreams. Like I didn't know what that entailed, but you know, I thought of so many ideas every second. Like I almost felt cursed by ideas. Uh, and I understand and that. In the, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And in, in the margins of the book, which my daughter now has, um, I wrote like, maybe I could open a kid's art center. Cause you don't need to be able to draw to teach kids. Right. Oh, yeah. And, um, but then it was really this connection between um, guiding people into an art process so that they could go back out into the art that is their life and create the change they wanted. So I literally, I went back out and sold books, sold tons of books, like more books than I'd ever sold before. It was so easy for some reason. It had been really hard the other summers and um, took the money and bought what had been like a crack house in Nashville, Tennessee <laughs> and renovated it. Opened the doors May 1st, 1996. Everyone who walked through the doors, which I had a lot of people come in the first couple hours, every single person was like, do you have a class schedule? And I was just picturing this like open gym kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I guess I thought, I felt like I could guide people in like, oh, here's some paints, like sit down and play with paint, you know? Right. And I had clay and pottery wheels, I think. I don't even remember. Like every room was a different color, um, which, you know, there's a reason art studios are painted white. I didn't even know that. Um, we tried to teach like painting classes down the road in the green room. It's really not a good thing to paint in a green room. Um, anyway, so without even skipping a beat, I just said, well, the class schedule will be out at the grand opening. So May 1st was the soft opening. May 15th was the grand opening because I was, I was very aware I could not teach classes, like actual classes. So I, again, this is before social media. <laughs> it's hard to remember, right? Or emails or anything. And people literally called or walked in the, the door and was like, do you need an art teacher? And I was like, yes. And I just took it as a sign that if they were there, that they were the ones, you know? Yeah. And um, so even with my lack of experience, but the intention, and then these art teachers that had no idea real, I mean, they weren't coming from let's empower people to live life as art. You know, they were from art school background they took um, all the drawing classes all the mixed media all exactly <laughs> they started exactly. They had like a portfolio <laughs> you know as an 18 year old kind of thing right. um but even with all that i'll never forget the consistent experience i had with my adult students which i did have kids walking up the front walk and they'd look at me we'd make eye contact they'd raise their eyebrows i'd raise my eyebrows and they're like guess what happened I'm like they're like, I did this. I stopped doing that. I'm moving. I'm, ch you know, oh, and man. then we'd look at each other and they'd be like, it's from the art class. And we were just constantly blown away. Um, so yeah, that, I mean, it feels like another lifetime ago. I can't even fathom, but I had an art center from 96 till 2010. Okay. It very much feels, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that you are being divinely guided <laughs> like you're all I couldn't make any book sales and then all of a sudden you know like it's <laughs> yeah. like make it rain so that you could take this crack house and you know turn it around into this really oh my gosh talk about like from what do they say from ashes to you know whatever from the ashes it comes yeah. and you built this space where people could be themselves without you were not worried about the outcome of it. You were just like kind of doing what I Well, thought. there were lots of moments, <laughs> trust me. Oh my gosh. I mean, by the time I opened, I had zero money in the bank account, Girl. you know, and I'd start feeling like, oh, I got like $600 in the bank account. And then the squirrel got into the electric box or oh. coming out of an open studio. I like backed into someone's car who was in a class at my art center. And there went the $500 I just made at the open studio. Um, open house so yeah no it was um but what is fascinating is this is before there was any talk of energy work um creative visualization was a thing but I you know I wasn't really tapped into that but I would go up into the upstairs and visualize people yeah. coming um I was very aware of energy uh, with people and also thinking about the art center. Uh, I trusted I could just say something out loud, like I need a watercolor teacher. 
like this is before talking to the universe or anything. And they would walk through the door within 24 hours. So because I was in such a vulnerable space, I had to get out of my own way. Like there was no illusion that I could do this. So I just was this open, open, open vessel. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I published my third book, 30 Days to Unstoppable. Mm Mm-hmm. And someone pointed out, like literally after the book was out, they're like, Whitney, you've you've been unstoppable since you opened the art center. And I was like, wow, because the key to being unstoppable is realizing that you're in a co-creative relationship with everythingness. Boom. We can end the podcast right here. That is so (laughs) true. We are here to co-create with the creator and with other creatives. Like it just amplifies. No, I mean- by the time you get a passionate idea that's lit you up, it is filtered through so many layers, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. By the time it lands with you, it's like all systems go, all whatever God, Jesus, the goddess, Polly, you know, yeah. whatever uh, you call it, whatever <laughs> you, you know, call it, Bridget, whatever. They're like, this is what we want you to do. You know, like we're just the on the ground. We're like the paintbrush. Of course, we can use our fingers, which I do plenty, but imagine you could only paint with a paintbrush. You need the bristles to touch the canvas to get the paint on the canvas. We're like the tip of the paintbrush. And then we're arguing with the all that is, but I don't And it's like, oh my gosh, just let us hold you and guide you. Oh, I love that metaphor. Um, I love that metaphor because it's so relatable. It's like, but who am I? who am I? And it's like, who are you not to be? That's why you're here. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's that whole, like you're everything and nothing. It's like, who am I to do this? I am completely, yeah, sovereign available. And I'm nothing because I'm still like, I just finished a program that I'm launching in January and it rolled out in not any way that I thought it was Uh like, and and it would usually be like, I'm getting ready to go out to the studio and I'm kind of in like, I don't know, do I do this today and this and this lesson? And then I'm like, what I really want to do. And then I'm like, oh my God, do that. Because we're meant to follow that feeling of grace and ease, right? And Absolutely. so then I go out and do that. And then one thing leads to another. And then I'm editing the video and looking at my notes. I'm like, oh yeah, this is the lesson I was supposed to talk about this. And that totally happened without me even... Mm. remembering to look at my notes you know mm. like well oh, it is so fun to live that way isn't yeah. it <laughs> I think I got to like my fifth or sixth retreat that I was facilitating and I'm like all right you know I have a lesson plan I also know you're going to come in hot and tell me what you want me to do all I have to do is be open to be of service to the women who are in the room like there is something bigger happening and so it's so beautiful yes. when we listen it's so beautiful when we listen and we trust And so girl, I'm super stoked. You um, are going to talk a little bit about symbols um, as we kind of cross over the threshold of the new year, but really we could use these symbols at any time. And so anytime, yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about symbols and what that means for you and how we can use them um, to kind of get messages or calm down? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes. There's so many facets to this work that is so stinking fun. I actually had a dream um, in March, 2011, that I was with one of my creatively fit coaches and I was explaining to her that now we prescribe symbols to people Ah. because in the process of learning about the symbol and painting the symbol, Mm -hmm. they'll get the energy, the information they need. And um, so about six months later, I started working with symbols and I really, it's a reminder, I should really write that book because from that moment on life, blah, blah, blah. anyway, um, so the so symbols are a really powerful way to access your unconscious and bring your unconscious and your conscious and your, you know, kind of super conscious into alignment mm-hmm. um, because one like if you look at the old way, I feel like it's old and it, no judgment if you're still doing this, anyone yeah. listening, but um, in the past, there had been a lot of talk, it seemed like around New Year's resolutions, right? And then we kind of went through that stage of like, 
okay, New Year's resolutions are meant to be broken. And we kind of started coaching ourselves as the collective through like, it's okay if you break your resolutions. Right. And then people started doing a word for the year. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is totally great. Totally yeah. fine. Yeah. And then working with a symbol, whether it's for the year, for a project, for your next level of personal growth or whatever uh, that you want, whether it's emotional, spiritual, or say you're, um, you know, shifting your career or kids are just out of the house or whatever, you can yeah. ask for a symbol for that. But symbols, unlike words, have no baggage. Right. Right. So <laughs> I say that example, as I like have this word right here that says ease as a reminder. <laughs> Right, right. Well, that's why when you hear things like, well, if the word ease triggers memories of you being stressed, then, you yeah, know, it's not working. Yeah. So it's just, it's just being careful of that. But yeah. um, the symbols, um, like, for example, here is the story of, I left my marriage in 2012, which and I went from like not having to earn money to make a living to having to make money, earning, yeah. earning, earning, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, yeah. I got lost there. And, um, and the husband was very business oriented and lots of spreadsheets. And, you know, he was always trying to motivate me to like focus on my sales. Right. And I just was like, it's my soul work. Like, well, I'm trying to, you know, I just was in total resistance. Yes. And then I'm by myself needing to pay the bills and everything. And, you know, I kind of needed to understand these things. And, um, I still was like, it, it was this beautiful, like six year process of like, how do I do this? Right. And so what I do is I do what we call soul scribble and you just doodle on the paper, like a quick scribble. And then you look and see what it makes you think of. Yeah. And so I asked the question, like, help me align with my highest level of, you know, business growth, being able to do yeah. this. I can make a living doing this work. And so I got a hot air balloon <laughs> and which, you know, there's the inner critic was like, well, how hard is it to see a balloon in a scribble? Cause of course I always scribble circles. Anyway, yeah. the hot air balloon told me as long as you keep your vibration high yeah. and share from that place, yes, it'll be blue skies. And yeah. And I'm like, okay, I can yeah. do that. Are you yeah. kidding me? I love doing the things that make me happy and yeah. sharing from that place. Yeah. So literally from then on, whenever I got worried about money, I'd picture a hot air balloon. Uh -huh. And then it was like, go do something that lights you up. And then the next step will be revealed. I right? love that. Cause you know, we're still human, right? We're, we're still going to have those doubts creep in and here's something that you fell back on to say, okay, let's check ourselves. Okay. All right get back into that space. So it's like this visual reminder. Absolutely. And it, the symbols meet you wherever you are, you know, um, I just came out of, I feel like as of today, solstice, it's solstice mm -hmm. right now. Um, like just today, I feel like I came out of a six week kind of underworld journey, um, probably triggered. My dad died last month. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm getting ready to travel for two and a half months, which is mm -hmm. great. But, you know, it's kind of a pressure cooker as far as like yeah. get everything all, you mm -hmm. know, planned and done. And who knows what else? I identified today that I felt like my like inner matrix is is or just got or whatever rearranged. But I was feeling anxious. I was clenching my jaw. Uh -huh. Like I'm still just on the, I feel it relaxing. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, okay, what is this all for? My symbols for 2024 are the lotus flower and the rainbow, mm -hmm. <laughs> which has been so fun to start playing with. But both of those appear or need the darkness, mm -hmm. right? The rainbow comes after a storm. Like whenever there's stormy, dark sky and rain and sunlight, that's when you look for the rainbow, right? right, right. Um, and of course the lotus flower, no muck, no lotus, right? Yeah. So. These symbols um, are yantras, which is a visual mantra, which can really inform, support, guide. Like I said, it meets you. They meet you where you are. 
and just it it feels like energetically they change like this very subtle vibration that's all around you yeah one year I worked with the feather um and this was still at the point probably where I had about 20k on the credit card after investing in my business you know and things are a little stressful (laughs) and um so the feather and the way you find these symbols is you ask you set the intention again this can be at any time of the year for anything you can work with as many symbols as you want yeah um you ask for a symbol i'd like a symbol for this help me with this and then in the next 24 48 hours you will either I've had people have profound dreams and visions, but what happens for me, frankly, is uh, either a symbol or an image appears repeatedly. And this could be, you know, a fox that runs in front of your car and you've never seen a fox in your neighborhood before. Um, It could be a fox on a coffee cup at Target, you know, like whatever. There's no grade of sacredness with these. Um, So they either repeat themselves or you find yourself incredibly attracted to something like lotus flowers. All of a sudden in November, I like wanted to eat them. I wanted to paint them and eat them. I just, I'm like, can I just like, I got this lotus flower rain, uh, rain jacket to go to Bali in the rainy season where I'm going next month. And I painted them. I have painted one on the door in my hallway. Like I just was obsessed with lotus flowers and I'm like whoa okay I guess that's my 2024 um so they find you they find they you. find you you don't look for them or try and figure it out yeah yes a, a reminder trying to figure everything out because we like you know we like order and we're like well how do I like how do I do it I need a spreadsheet it's like hey man you, the world is can give you messages if we open ourselves up. I mean, you were talking about this and I'm like, oh my word. I'm like, I keep seeing spider, you know? And, yeah. and, and after we got off self-love on Saturday, I found yet another one. And it's like, okay, and she's so tiny. She's so tiny. And I started thinking about, okay, spider, she's creative. She's got this web like that you can't see it, but it's there holding and, and catching and bringing in the things that she needs. And the other thing that came through was she's not attached to one home. She's her own home. And she's like, she can go. And she's uh, almost like, um, like a, not like a vagabond, but like, you know, she can move and she's not Mm -hmm. tied down and she has lots of babies too. I I'm guilty of that. So, (laughs) (laughs) so I was like, I love this. I love this. It was like affirmation for me. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Right. And if you're wondering, curious, is this my symbol? Just ask for affirmation and you'll get it. Someone will mention it. Um, Actually, my creatively fit coaching training happened. uh, It doesn't, it's not exactly a symbol, but the same process can be used for anything you're trying to figure out, right? Like I got this long, passionate email from a woman in Nigeria, um, and she was sharing with me the depth and the breadth of the plight of women in Nigeria and and asked if I had an African branch. And, you know, my mind, my ego was like, girl, I don't have a stick or a twig or a leaf or like nothing, you know. Um, but the energy, right, Aww. in the email. So like whatever it is, if there's a lot of energy there or, or it's something surprises you with how whatever it just it surprises you what I decided before I replied was to wait 24 hours and see what came up and within 24 hours I was just visiting this county where I live now there are only 7,000 people in the whole county 2 million acres 7,000 people two people mentioned Nigeria to me in the next like 14 hours you're like Nigeria you're like what (laughs) Yeah, there was a, a Catholic priest from Nigeria who was going home and the neighbor was going to his goodbye party. And the guys that had moved in and started the internet business, one of them was raised in Nigeria. Oh, and, my yeah. word. So I replied back to her and it led to my whole creatively fit coaching training, which has been like, like the bread and butter and like 500 plus amazing, mostly women who are just like my soul family. Um, just amazingness that all came 
because of that email. And so, you know, the more you tune in to these kind of subtle, intuitive ways that we're being guided, uh, you know, spirit isn't going to send you a message in a linear, logical way. Like we've pretty much got that covered, right? It right. has to come through the more present moment, intuitive, creative side of your um, way of thinking and being in the world. And um, and that's ultimately, I think we all want to be, you know, living our purpose, feeling inspired. Uh, we want to be lit up and happy for ourselves and others. Yeah. And that doesn't happen following any kind of logical linear path. It does right? not. We're on a spiral path. We're cycling and spiraling and spinning and twirling right. through this universe. And so like, let's, let's move with that. Let's you know. girl, I'll have what you're having. Absolutely. Like, yes, a triple please. Um, yes. You guys, Winnie Freya, get your paws on her. She has lots of ways where you can find her. Um, she's online. She's offering, um, you're offering a life a free artist, gift. Yeah. A free gift of, of a life yeah. artist masterclass. Now that name as someone who is maybe not totally experienced with painting, um, if you say it's a masterclass, I'm like, oh my God, but am I good enough? Like, and so what would you say to mm. someone like me? <laughs> well, I actually created this course uh, to be a experience that does not require any painting or drawing, oh. but I share five sacred symbols with you and kind of take you on a journey actually along a creek in the mountains where I live and um and just share the difference of living as like a humanoid versus a life artist. Yeah. And so it's a way to get to know like, wow. okay, what are you talking about? You know, like, just go watch. There's like five, 10 minute videos and a symbol. And by the end, you will, you will have a much better understanding. Beautiful. It's like little bite-sized pieces. I love that. And thank you for your generosity and offering it to the villagers, anyone who's listening. And so Whitney and I would like to thank you for coming in and sharing the space with us today. Holy smokes. We know what to do, love sprinklers. We got to get out there and do it and do it. Spread the love. We have to take care of ourselves first so that we can, um, you know, it can overflow because that's why we're here. And so Whitney, again, thank you so much for sharing time and space. And thank um, you, Michelle. Yep. All of Whitney's good stuff will be in the show notes. Take a peek. And until next time, we'll see you then. Take such good care.